Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. I think it's time to reload some 22 Nosler ammunition. Now I've already put up a bunch of posts and videos related to 22 Nosler, starting with a two-part series covering my very first PRS match, shooting this 22 Nosler AR-15. In the last video, we compared 223 Remington to 556 NATO to 22 Nosler to 22 250. Now we're going to pick up where we left off there and talk about reloading 22 Nosler. Now, specifically, I want to compare reloading 223 Remington to reloading 22 Nosler. We're going to talk about some potential problems and some solutions for reloading and shooting 22 Nosler, some of the load data, some of the pressure signs, that kind of thing. We're going to walk through the process end to end and wrap things up. So let's start by comparing 223 Remington to 22 Nosler reloading. I'll first go over my setup here. I've got the Hornady Lock and Load AP 5 Station Progressive Press with my KMS squared light, which sheds a little bit more light on the subject. And it was set up to load 223, and all I had to do to switch over to 22 Nosler was two things. One was swap the dies out, second was adjust my powder charge and add a different powder. So basically if you're set up to reload 223 Remington you're almost all the way there to reload 22 Nosler you just need to adjust your powder measure you need a set of dies and I will also note this is an early production sample of the Ellie Wilson 22 Nosler case gauge a very important tool to have as well and this is cartridge specific so any cartridge where the case is different you're going to need a unique case gauge for that so setting up for 22 Nosler is just like setting up for 223 and if you're already set up for 223 you're 99% of the way there and that's a good segue to talk about some of the potential problems and the solutions when it comes to developing a load for 22 Nosler shooting 22 Nosler and reloading 22 Nosler now, early on I had worked up a load it was based right off of the 22 Nosler load data from Nosler.com and it was shooting great until I shot it all day in 95 degree heat. The ammunition was hot, the rifle was hot, I was hot, and a max load of Varget was too much. I had some pressure signs. I didn't notice them prior because it, the rifle was running great in practice and during load development. But under closer examination, I saw a couple things. I saw case head swipe and I saw an embossing of the extractor recess on the bolt on the rim of the case. I also had some failure to feeds. Now the failure to feeds I initially thought oh do I need to lubricate my bolt? Um, do I have too low of a load where it's not cycling the bolt all the way back? Well once I took a look at the pressure signs that case head swipe, the extractor emboss and also flattened primers I knew that I had some sort of an issue and with 22 Nosler there's going to be two primary issues you're going to run into. One is pressure signs because you're running a hot rotted cartridge you're right on the threshold anyway and it's easy to push the pressures over that threshold especially if you're shooting in high ambient temperatures like I was with a faster powder like Varga. So the the pressure is one potential issue. The other potential issue is timing. Now, some guys are extending their gas tube two inches and, and or running heavier buffers. So if you're running into issues, if you're seeing something that you're not uh, comfortable with, with, with the cartridge, it could be either the rifle or, or it could be your load. I solved my problems by going from Varget to a slower powder, H380, which is sort of the canonical Hodgson powder for 22250. In fact, that's how it got its name, 38.0 grains in 2250 of this H380 was the, the sort of classic load. Going to that slower powder completely solved all of my issues. Now, I've heard of other guys having problems. Some of the early feedback on 22 Nosler, uh, evidently Johnny from Johnny's Reloading Bench had some problems with brass getting torn up. I know Nosler came out with a revision. It's um, a more durable brass in the second revision. Uh, I believe I'm using the second revision and, and to test that I actually did 
10 firings in a row of this load, which is 30.5 grains of H380. That's 97% of max. After 10 firings, this case is still in good shape. If you look really closely at the picture, I'll put that up here. You can see that the actual stamp is slightly more faint, but if you look at the rim thickness, it's just cosmetic and that is kind of an artifact of a rebated rim design in a hot rotted cartridge. Less area, more force equals more pressure. Much higher pressure on this rim is where some guys get into trouble with their timing, their pressure, and it is normal. But just to prove a point, I did 10 firings in a row, had zero problems with that, and I'm really liking this H380 load. So I'd recommend if you do run 22 nozzler that, and if you do reload 22 nozzler that you give it a try. Okay, so there's some of the problems, there's some of the solutions. I'm gonna have more detail in the write-up, of course, as usual. Let's take a look at the reloading process. So let's take a look at components real quick before we get to the press. Federal number 205 small rifle primers, Hodgdon H380. I've got once fired nozzler, 22 nozzler cases here that I've sprayed with my homemade lanolin and alcohol case lube. I've got a story on that you might want to check out. And then we've got Nosler 70 grain RDF bullets, which did really well in my PRS competition out to 700 yards. And with the Hornady Lock and Load AP, we've got our number 16 shell plate, which is the same as 223 Remington. In station number one, we've got our 22 Nosler sizing and depriming die. Station number two is empty. Station number three is our powder major for charging. Station number four is our cedar, which we can also crimp with if we were using a cannulard bullet. Station number five is empty. All right, let's get things going. We're going to start by taking a case and put it in station number one. Size and deprime. And then on the way down, before we half index to the priming, we're going to grab the case out and validate our setup. So first we're going to look at sizing, which means inserting the case in and looking at the case rim with respect to the lower and upper steps. We're good here because we're between the two. We're not protruding up out of the back of the case gauge. And then we're going to check our trim length. We're good. So we can put this back in station number two, prime it, and then just continue inserting cases into station number one each time until the press is fully run up. Once we start getting cases ready for station number four, we're going to start placing bullets as well. Basically the same as 223 Remington, we're just using different dies and dumping a lot more powder in there, 20 to 25% more powder. And we are done. Well, there you go. Loading 22 nozzler is not difficult, but it does require some attention to detail. I recommend starting by loading small batches of ammunition, shooting it over a chronograph, taking a close visual inspection of your cases after they're fired, and making sure that everything looks good. Do you have any signs of pressure? Do you have any signs of timing? If you do, you can either make adjustments on the rifle or you can make adjustments with your powder or your powder charge. There's a lot of things that you can do to get 22 nozzler in the sweet spot. It's a hot rotted cartridge. It's a lot of fun and I hope that you'll give it a try. 
If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss any of the action here on ultimatereloader.com, please subscribe to my channel. Till next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.